mailbag time. We've got a few things here to go through. A bunch of stuff in AliExpress. I'm not quite sure what's here yet. We'll figure that out. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you're first time here. With the usual reminders. Because YouTube don't remind you. So we've got to. It's an IC extractor. For doing dip ICs, apparently. There's a RAM IC which I've got sitting here in a tube. We need to put this away somewhere. So it looks like you push it that way to release it. And it will hold in like that. Then you can pull with these, so you just hold on to it in some form. So when you're holding on to it, you'll it push it, pull against these, so I'll lift it out of a socket or out of a PCB or something. Obviously, out of a socket is what the intention is. So that releases it, and that pulls it. I'm not quite sure what dry this does, but it does obviously this sort of size, it's probably a 20 pin. This is a 14 pin, which is probably a little bit on the small side for this one. So I think it's meant for a 16 pin. Yeah. So I think it's meant for a 16 pin, this one. 16 to say 20 or so, the looks of it. Although on the back here, it does actually say. This is the GJ3. It's supposed to be 14, 16, 18, 20, and 22. There's also a 6, which does 24 up to 40 pin. I got this because I wanted something different to what I already have, which is basically like a tweezer style ones with the hooks on the end, you sort of squeeze it and pull things out, which I don't actually like that much because it does mean you're pulling directly on the board and you're putting a lot of stress on the solder joint and stuff like that. So I don't like to actually use that type. Yeah, there's potential for cracking a circuit board or lifting a trace or something if you're not careful with those because you're putting direct pulling pressure on the solder joints and the copper traces. This is at least pulling against the socket that it's in so you know that will rest against the socket as you squeeze it or lift it straight out of the socket. So it should mean you're not putting stress on the circuit board. So anyway I thought I'd get one. Some ICs. I bet these are something like 7406s. 74LS279 N. But are they real? Well, fortunately my chip tester can't find it, so I don't know. Either it's fake or this doesn't have it in its database. Hmm. This looks suspiciously similar packaging. GJ6, which is the other size, which I showed before, doing 24 through to 40 pin devices. The size of that thing comes out, so it's the wider profile. This mechanism feels a bit different. It's like it's. It still pulls far enough. It just doesn't. But the exact same way as this one. It's good. This one goes right to the end, whereas this one didn't. Also, they've got the stroke to allow it to widen more than this one does. Give it a broader range. That's fine. Two of them. Excellent. There will be links for these things down below if you're interested in these. And a look on the back of the packaging even says which one's which and the pins and stuff. Although, interestingly, it says 16 to 22 on this one. 16 to 22 on this one, but on natural thing it said 14 to 22. I think 14 is being a little bit generous. It's a sample book of what? Ah, uh, oh, it's a sample book of LEDs. Ah, oh. okay. You can blame another YouTuber for this. So, Mike from Mike's Electric Stuff posted a picture on Twitter about a LED sample book. I thought, 
That's a great idea. So I bought one. So it goes 0402, 0805, is it 0603? Is it 0603, 0805s, 1210s, 2835s, 5730s, 5050s. Nice. Them colours. Is there single colours? Yeah, those single colours. It's got a pink one. That'd be good for Beat Looney. Different colours are those. It doesn't like there's any multicolour ones. Would have been nice to have multicolours. These are all single colour pack. So there's no like RGB ED kind of things. Which would have been nice. But uh, yeah. Handy if you need just your odd random replacement here or there. Excellent. I think I've got to be careful on this one, because if it is what I think it is, you won't like a knife going through it. Yeah, see? That's right. Get some more sample books. So what are these ones? More LEDs, 0402s, 0805s. This is just a, a smaller sample pack. Basically the same things. It's a really small sample book, that one. But I think it was pretty cheap. I bought a few different ones because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to be getting. And these ones are different again. Diode sample book. Okay. So the first one's little LEDs. This is standard diodes. In service mount packages. Again, very really handy if you just want the odd one here or there to do a repair. Hopefully one of these will actually do the job you want. One in four double seven, nice and common, and five eight one seven. So I've been using those recently or something. Nice. Let's see what's in this then. Not oh, full of polystyrene ball things. on eBay purchase. It's a Zen 50. I actually tried to do collaborations with Peak, trying to get like a sponsorship thing, and they've always said, yeah, we'll be interested, and then nothing's ever happened of that, every time. It's been a bit frustrating in a way, because I, you know, I would actually like to, you know, get some free gear from them, and... but I'd have to pay for these, which is a bit annoying. Just like everybody else, really. Right. So, Peak Electronics Zen 50, this is Zenodiode Tester for testing Zenodiodes. Now, you can do Zenodiode testing to some degree with some of the other Peak Electronic testers, but it don't go to the high voltages. This thing's got 50 volts. So, I got this as a result of the HP 3561A, which I was working on, where I had the Zenodiode net, which was off value. I was just thinking, well, I would actually like to test this properly with the Zenodiode tester. I didn't have one. I so, well, okay, fine, let's get one. Now I've got one. So here's a diode actually substituting the HP 3561A, which I found was ended up being a higher voltage than it wanted. I mean, it's specified at three volts. Um, this is a service mount MILF. MILF. <laughs> a service mount MILF diode. And. <laughs> oh my god. Don't get those two words mixed up. Now. And I, I, when I put it in the unit, it's giving a 3.3 volt instead of a 3 volt voltage, which is why I wanted to get it in a diode tester. So let's just um, test this and see what comes up. So it's measuring 2.7 volts at 2 milliamps. Yeah, 3 volts at 5 milliamps. Obviously, the 5, volt, 5 milliamp rating is what's this specified as? 10 milliamps, 3.3 volts. Here we go, see this. So this is what's important to know about the diode tester, 15 milliamps, 3.4, back down to 2 milliamps again. So you can actually see how the zona diode is actually going to react to different currents. Handy information to know. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. There's a playlist down here of things I think you should watch. There's a playlist over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. There's a subscribe link over here and there's a Patreon support link over there. If you want to help support the channel, help to buy things from Mailbag or bits of broken test gear to fix to make videos about to entertain you, then consider Patreon. Bye.
I've actually tried to do calibrations with calibrations. I've actually tried to do calibrate. Oh, 